Hey travelers, infrastructure upgrade time and I figured I'd point and talk about the things and ask you guys a few questions because I have some questions. Maybe there's some networking nerds out there that, you know, like me get excited about this stuff and like watching. I don't know. You let me know. Anyways, I'm running a Fortinet FortiGate 501E. I had a 100E in here. Good unit, like FortiGates. Talk about that in a bit. Um, yeah, but I didn't have any multi-gig interfaces. So the 501E gives you two of these SFP plus ports on it. Um, they're pretty cool. Um, had them on other devices, never used them, but yeah, it's this huge thing that jams into there. Uh, this is a what they call a DAC cable, direct attached copper. Uh, these are surprisingly fancy looking, but actually really quite affordable. This is, I don't know, $9 or something, $12 or something like that. It's, it's pretty reasonably priced. They're latching. Uh, there's a little pulley thing and there's like a little latchy thing and stuff. Pretty cool. Um, and inside these cages, uh, you could shove different modules that do different things. So I got a transceiver here that converts the SFP into regular Ethernet, RJ45. So I can plug into my ONT. Talk about that in a bit. That's my fiber network. It's the modem for the fiber network. Um, but you could also get optical ones to go long distances, short differences, whatever. Uh, and then you avoid some of the latency that you have from copper. Uh, in addition, you get pretty low risk of signal degradation or interference because well, light doesn't really care so much about magnetic fields and, and whatnot. So you could put a bunch of light cables right next to each other and well, they don't really care about all these interference issues you could potentially get when you start running long lengths and they could run very high bandwidth. Uh, so this is only rated at 10 gigabit, which is fine for my uh, WAN interface. You know, I, I'm not gonna have more than 10 gig to the internet for some time most likely and I don't really need it anyways. Um, but yeah, you could get these of course up to higher speeds if need be. Uh, so this is under construction, I just got this little 10 gig uplink, 2.5 gig QNAP switch, um, but I got another switch coming. And uh, yeah, you can daisy chain these, which is pretty cool. So it's a 10 gig plug here, this DAC cable plugs this guy, and you can jump around over and over. Very low latency on these links. Uh, from what I understand, it's a this is a roughly 2 to 3 microseconds, which is basically what you would call nothing in most contexts, except maybe financial circles. Uh, this guy has, I think, a 2.95 microsecond firewall latency, which is also very, very fast. A lot of typical uh, firewalls or uh, consumer routers, I should say, have maybe 0.1 uh, milliseconds up to maybe, in some extreme cases, maybe even a millisecond, um, but typically around half a millisecond for like cheap consumer routers, um, whereas this is, <laughs> you shave a few zeros off that, which doesn't really matter for a lot of applications, but uh, they're the kind of neat. This actually has an Intel i7-6700 processor in it, in addition to many custom ASICs, so custom silicon made specifically um, to improve performance of the network and inspect uh, the data that's running through it as fast as possible. Uh, super overkill for a residential network, and the license for this is, is outrageously expensive, so this is unlicensed, of course. Uh, interesting story, I actually bought this from a used, of course, from a local um, cable company. So this is used to be serving up, presumably, cable internet, uh, which you know I'm no longer using. And uh, now it's in my house, uh, running on a competitor's fiber network. So that's fun. But yeah, these guys are a bazillion dollars and the software form is really the expensive licensing. Because um, the, sort of the whole goal of these is you pay someone to keep this up to date for you and it protects your network from intrusions, from bad actors, uh, viruses, and things like this. So it blocks it at the hardware level here before it could get onto your network. So, you know, even if Betty in accounting tries to download some bad file with an attachment, this device here will actually scan everything. If you set it up right and you enable it, this will scan every device, um, I should say, every packet, all the information that runs through your network will run through this first, of course, because, you know, the internet runs through it. And it'll make sure that it's safe to put on the network. And if one of your devices on the network has an issue, it'll also remove it from the network if it were to say, be able to infect other devices and things like this. Um, really not that necessary for a residential network and the price on these is outrageous, but you could get them for pennies on the dollar if um, you get them used off contract and you don't pay for the licensing. And Fortinet actually allows this hardware to continue operating after the license is expired, um, which, a lot of these devices actually don't work. These enterprise class devices, once the software uh, expires and you no longer have a license, the hardware stops working. So oftentimes what happens is 
in security conscious places, they'll buy these things with a three-year license. After three years, they throw it out. Like literally, they'll, they'll send it out to recycling, they'll destroy it, they'll grind it up, whatever, just to ensure that there's potential, there's no potential for data leakage. Um, not that these things tend to store a great deal, but there are logging devices on there. Um, and I can actually open this guy up and show you guys in, in a little bit. Probably not right now, but maybe in another video if you're interested in the opening up. It's very rare to see inside uh, security appliances like this because they're very, very expensive and they're used typically in um, applications where people are opening the hardware. <laughs> Anyways, give you a little overview of these things. So this is my um, ONT. So it's what they call the modem for a fiber network. Um, very different operation method from like a, a cable network. And of course, there's the actual fiber. So there's light transmitting the internet into my building um, rather than electrical impulses on a copper conductor. Uh, nice thing about this is it's a passive network. Uh, plugs into this connector they call PLN, Passive Optical Network. Um, so it should be that if the power goes out, the network doesn't care. Um, whereas I've had issues frequently if the power goes out, the cable goes down because there's amplifiers along the way among other things. And you know, in some areas they maintain these amplifiers and so the battery backups don't work and stuff like that. But still, this is a much better system because all you really need to worry about is the uh, place where your fiber actually terminates, some you know miles away or whatever. That building obviously still needs that power and internet access, connection to the actual internet, um, to be able to serve you internet, because you know your internet here goes to a bazillion customers, which goes to a big building, which connects those bazillion customers to a really big pipe on the internet. Um, yeah, and as long as they have power, you have internet. But with this, dramatically more complicated because there's a lot of amplifiers along the way because of the, the nature of this thing that works and stuff like that. And they all, all the amplifiers need to work, every one of them. Otherwise, well, you have uh, internet outages. And whenever my power went down, my internet would always go out on cable. And with fiber, that's not the case. So that's great. Um, hopefully <laughs> there, uh, there aren't like big trucks or something like that that crash into the poles and knock down the lines or whatever. But a lot of the system is actually underground, so that's pretty low risk. Anyways, this device here will actually do up to 10 gigabit. 10 gig up, 10 gig down, which is a lot. Um, I only have gigabit internet, so it's over provisioned to around 1150 down, 1150 up. So that's still quite a lot. Um, I'll actually show you what the fiber strand looks like. It's, it's kind of neat. I think you haven't seen it. That's the internet. That's 10 gigabits of internet right there. Well, technically, it actually do a lot more than that, but oh boy, this is tough. Oh, it's good. It's got to get it. Okay, we got it. We got it. And you, these come back a lot faster than um, the cable modems. So those tend to take like 30 seconds or a minute or two or something to spring back after you do something stupid like that. But uh, yeah, okay. eventually it's a little light. will start looking. There it goes. Yeah, and uh, this guy has a 10 gig. RJ45 connector, and I got plugged into this transceiver on this 10 gig interface. It's an F SFP Plus port, and well, that's SFP Plus, which is not Ethernet, uh, so I can't plug it in directly. Um, but I got this transceiver here. It converts the SFP Plus into 10 gigabit Ethernet. And I can plug it in. What's interesting is you can get these ONTs built into this. So this is actually a really big thing if you haven't seen SFP. You know, massive. This whole thing jams into this uh, cage inside there, right? Uh, and you can actually get these that are that whole box integrated into this plug thing. Oh boy. So you actually just plug this right into that, which is super cool. Um, but I called up my uh, internet provider and they say they don't support it. Uh, I read on the internet that apparently you could, depending on the authentication method for the network, that you could get these um, these ONT uh, SFP transceivers and um, or SFP ONTs, and um, you could flash them to do whatever you want and make it work anyways without their permission. Um, so I'm considering trying that. Maybe someone out there has an experience with that. What I would like to do is ideally save a tiny bit of power if possible, and more importantly, improve latency. Because when I um, when I ping this unit here from one of my computers, I see around 0.1 milliseconds, zero milliseconds reported to 0.1 millisecond reported latency to this here, to the firewall. But then to this box, it's another around three quarters of a millisecond, which seems really slow. Uh, I'm not sure if that's like the internal processing of this or some nature of how 
um, the fibers split up and it's it's sort of just how it's being measured or something? I don't really know. Would it be would it improve at all if I had a uh, SFP ONT? Could I improve the latency or is it part of the factor of like this this transceiver converting to RJ45, maybe some internal conversions in there, whatever processing this box is doing, or is it just the, the nature of it? It doesn't really matter if I had a SFP one or not. I don't know. Let me know if you guys know. But um, yeah, I think it's kind of cool. You know, it, it works really good. It's real fast. Um, I get great speeds over a thousand megabit. Um, these DAC cables are pretty cool. Never really used them before. If you haven't seen them, they um, look real expensive and fancy, right? But um, they got a little pulley thing. There's like a little latching mechanism in there. So they, you push them in, they snap in. Pretty cool. Those are like $12 or something for that. Um, I think this is around three, two or three microseconds for this link here. And this firewall is rated at, uh, I think, 2.95 microsecond firewall latency. Um, so and the computer plugged into here, you could access this at basically no measurable latency other than whatever the um, overhead is in the software on the computer and your network interface card on the computer and, and North so uh, the deals, the measurement anomalies and whatnot. Um, yeah, but um, sort of just working on optimizing latency in my network, trying to get it to go zippity zappity, uh, reduce stales and, and these sorts of deals. Um, yeah, let me know if you want to see inside this thing and you want more information, whatever, maybe I talk about it a bit more. Got another switch on the way. This is a uh, pretty nice unit, I like it. But uh, only a four port, two and a half gig. It's got two 10 gig SFP plus uplinks. Um, I like QNAP products. Uh, reasonably affordable for what it is, but you can get uh, Chinese units a little cheaper. Uh, this guy takes a lot of power though, unfortunately, so uh, my runtime is a little shy of where it ought to be. This is an approximate estimate. Um, I got some extended battery modules here. <laughs> There's a lot of battery. Uh, this rack weighs like 500 pounds or something ridiculous. Uh, these things are deep as hell. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you guys think it's interesting. Let me know and share a little bit more in the future.